and welcome to Seven Days to Die, where I'm just in the process of remodeling. So let's put down an oven, and what else can we do? A trash compactor, of course, we want to have that. Of course, if we want to have an oven, we want to have an oven top. Let's say maybe something like this. What should we have there? Hmm, maybe a sink would be nice. Eh, let's try this one. Yeah, this one looks a bit better. So you have a sink down into that one. And yeah, doesn't this look good? Uh, of course, we have to do something on the side. Hmm. Maybe. Good question. What can we have on the side that looks pretty all right? Oh, that one doesn't look too bad. See, there you are. All of a sudden, you have a stove, you have a burner, so you have a sink, and you have a trash compactor. Pretty easy. And of course, all this is accomplished with painting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's going to be a short little guide to how you do your painting in seven days to die. Thanks for the continued support by the community. And if you really enjoy my videos, why not consider sponsoring me on patreon.com as well. Link will be below. Of course, come join my discord and why not follow me on Twitter as well. I definitely follow back other gamers. Now on to the basics. So you obviously need a paintbrush and paint. And how do you do that? Well, easy enough. You look for paint brush and for the paint brush just a little bit of wood and leather so that's really easy to craft and then you have the paint brush not a problem now the paint is a little bit tougher you do need the chemistry station you need chrysanthemum cotton golden rod flower and some murky water now these ones are generally not the issue but finding the chemistry station is but once you have that one each of these one that you mix up will be 50 units so it's pretty cheap and easy to get you just need the chemistry station and if you can't craft the chemistry station just go find some uh, go find somewhere somewhere because there are a lot of them around and then you take it and you pick it up there are two modes of painting one is if you are, are in creative mode and one if you are in survival mode. And it's quite important to know the difference. Survival mode is, of course, if you're just playing the game, if you hit R, you pull up all this where you have the materials, which is the textures. You have the paintbrush, which is basically painting one. You have the paint roller that paints nine to 12, depending on how you hit it. And of course you have the texture picker. So what's the difference here? Well, let's start with the materials. You select this one and you get access to all these ones. Whereas in Alpha 16, you had to find books to unlock some of this one. In basic Alpha 18, you don't. It's all available immediately. The downside is that the textures have changed. Some of them look fairly crappy if you're going to use them. And there seem to be a fair bit less of them. Unfortunately, I hope in Alpha 18, they have expanded this. But uh, let's say you want to have some. Of course, we want to have a cold beer sign. You hit it. And it says it's decoration and it costs one per meter. If you change, for instance, to let me see if I can find something else that is, yep. The wall covering is two per meter. And there are some, I believe, that are even more. I thought there was one that is three. But usually it's one or two. And it matters a little bit because if you're painting a lot, it will definitely require more paint. But let's start with what we want to do. Let's have the beer sign. So I select it. I hit escape to get out. I look to where I want to paint and I right click. Let's say I didn't like this. I can remove it by left clicking where you basically wipe it away. So the original texture will end up being where it is. Now this is using the normal paintbrush. You see, if I do this, it gives me one. If you hold R again and you go to the paint roller, uh, paint roller does it change yeah and uh, then you right click it'll give you nine so it's a lot easier if you're going to do large areas let's say i want to do everything in brick i can do that a lot faster than doing individually but of course it means that if you paint something wrongly you can do massively wrong as well but the same thing if you want to delete it you left click and it will remove all the paint and you can see here underneath here's iron or steel and here's just concrete so what's this one, the texture picker? Well, let's go back to the paintbrush. So let's say you've uh, you've painted really nice stuff. You go, oh, I want this 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 purple. Then hold R, texture picker. You see the the paint well, the brush. Let's see down here. Actual changes to the texture, and I can paint it. So it's a pretty easy way of uh, not having to go and select them one by one. You just go up and say, oh, I want this one. And you paint some more and you say this one is what I want and you continue with this one. So it's a pretty easy way to just continue painting with the texture that you have around. You don't have to hold R 
or even hit R to go in here and then select it, find it. You basically just point and select. So that's quite convenient. Now, as you see, my paint down in the bottom right is reducing every time I'm painting. And of course, if I paint with a paint roller, you'll see it drop by was the equivalent of how much paint I'm using. So that's pretty straightforward. That's all in survival. Pretty easy. Now let's go into creative mode. So I'm going to go into creative mode. This is helpful for people who are building or just doing things in creative. Let me get up here on my little base. Now if I hold R, you'll see I have a bunch of other stuff. Of course I have the materials, I have the paintbrush, paint roller, but I also have a spray gun. So let's select that one and it allows me to do a massive area. So that can really help if you're going to do big areas. Be, uh, be a little bit careful though, because if you hit it wrongly like I did here, you see it painted all this and it also painted all this. So it's a really big area. So be a bit uh, careful about it. Uh, let's go back to the paintbrush so you don't, I don't mess up. Uh, you also have the paint all sides. So normally if I paint something and if I put it here, you'll see I paint, oh, sorry. Let's remove that. Let's go back to selecting the, the texture I want to have. Let's say this one. If I paint this one, did I select the wrong one? No. Okay, so I painted one side. Now, of course, uh, if you're in creative mode, uh, that can take a long time. Let's say you want to do a whole house of it. And uh, that's why they have this paint all side one, which basically means if I do this one, all the sides will be painted, which is really, really useful when you're trying to do this fast. And you don't have access to this survival because obviously it's a little bit illogical to paint all around unless you are in a creative mode. Now there's also one more that is really, um, really useful and that's copy block. So if I do copy block and I'm, I have to have uh, some free space on my hotbar, you saw something appeared and it says that it has a small little, um, little brush there as well. And if I place this down, it's actually the same as this block because that's what I picked up. So let's say I want to get this one. I do copy block. And if I place it down, you'll see it has the exact same textures on the same facing like, like this one, which is really helpful for when you are painting large things. Let's say I've painted outside here and I've decided I'm going to have this color scheme inside. I'm going to have this outside. I basically just pick it up and I can keep placing it. And I do that in a lot of my videos because it really saves me a lot of time. I just select the general uh, color scheme beforehand and then I pick up the block and I use those ones. You might have seen this by this icon there. You might have wondered what that is. So that's pretty straightforward. But these are the extra ones that you have as part of being in creative mode. Of course, if you're just playing the game, you won't have access to them. You will have access to just the normal one. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So make sure you craft a lot of the paint, get your paintbrush, and then just go wild on what you want to do. And you can see there's a number of these ones out there. And a pretty straightforward way of doing it is to have, let's say, a storage box. Let's see if I can get into creative mode again. Storage box that you can be obviously craft. Uh, you can pl put them down and then you can just paint it depending on what uh, items you want to inside. Let's say you want to have medical, you paint that. Let's say you want to have uh, food, you paint it like that. And this is the same as we did in Alpha 16, but it saves you from having signs for some of these basic stuff. So it can be really useful. Now, there are some extra tricks that uh, people will notice. Let me do that soil, uh, forest, Round. Uh, some people have noticed that one issue that you have with some of the blocks is that, let's say I have some forest here and you are having your base, then you have this really annoying gap here. And uh, it doesn't look li really good because this is how the, the system works where you're having um, a normal ground blo block like stone or, or dirt and you have another crafted block or a square block and uh, it doesn't really match together, but you can actually do something pretty nice by using painting. And let's get the, and this is crafted. Let's see, it's the sheet. And you have this iron sheet, and let's uh, craft a few of these ones. So it's just a metal sheet or iron sheet that it costs 40. Now, what you do, and it's, it's a very thin one. So if I put it down here, you'll see it's really, really thin, and you can hardly see it's like 
one millimeter thin. But the way you use it is that you do uh, advanced rotation and you put it down like this. And you'll see that the nice thing is that it blends in with whatever you have here. Let's say you want it to look like gravel, you select that and you paint it like this. Now it's not perfect obviously, but uh, depending on what material you use, of course this is going to look much more natural than having this really weird uh, bump that you see. And the bump is actually pretty bad as well because it, uh, if you are using a vehicle you can get stuck there which is really annoying. So this can be really helpful, you just use the iron sheet and paint it and uh, you're pretty good to go. You get a smooth view here. There is a slight bump, you can see you know, I walk this just slight bump up. It's not extremely noticeable, but at least it's better than having a hole. So that's a quick tip as well. I hope you enjoyed. Go wild with your painting and uh, maybe one day we'll be able to make uh, the painting like these ones as well. That would be really cool if we could make these ones. Unfortunately, we can't. We can't even pick them up anymore. I'll see you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.